Welcome to the FanDuel Hurry Up. I am Frank Stanfield. Greg Sussman just got married this weekend, so I figured I'd hop into the host chair, and we welcome in Davis Maddock to give us his Week 11 waiver wire pickups. What's going on, Davis? Dude, what is Greg getting, what is he doing getting married during the football season? Like, did, did his uh, new wife get to call the shots on this or what? This seems like bad planning. I have no answers for you, Davis. As far as I know, his wife is also a football fan, so... Not really sure what's going on, but we have to make it work regardless. Let's hop into the quarterback position here, Davis. And you like Kyle Allen heading into week 11. The production has been modest here, but I assume that you like the matchup here going up against the Atlanta Falcons. Is that correct? Definitely like the matchup for him this week, but he also has a pretty soft schedule in the playoffs overall. And I'm thinking a lot of the people who are still grinding their fantasy teams in week 11, these are probably the teams that are going to be in the playoffs. So you want to be looking at playoff schedule. You want to be looking at, okay, would I actually be playing this guy or is he just going to be wasting a roster spot? And I think Kyle Allen having a softer playoff schedule, you know, it, it might make him like a better hold than someone like Jacoby Brissett or even like Ryan Tannehill, who's pretty popular. So that's why we are on Kyle Allen right now. Yeah, surprisingly, the Atlanta Falcons' run defense has been pretty solid so far this year. They have been a pass defense funnel, so look for Kyle Allen to take advantage in Week 11 against the Atlanta Falcons and down the stretch in your fantasy playoffs. Let's move over to Ryan Tannehill and Davis. Normally, we don't talk about quarterbacks that are about to enter their bye week, but Ryan Tannehill has been playing pretty damn well. 19 fantasy points in each of his four starts and at least 37 rushing yards in back-to-back -back games. What do you like about Ryan Tannehill? Yeah, Tannehill is a guy that I've been picking up in some deeper formats over the last few weeks, and uh, it's because, one, he's been playing pretty well as a passer, but two, Tennessee has really unlocked him uh, as far as letting him run. He's been scrambling a little bit. He had the two-point conversion rush uh, on Sunday against the Kansas City Chiefs, uh, which was you know, definitely brutal for someone who had a Kansas City Chiefs ticket. But, uh, you know, I, I think the fact that they're letting Tannehill run, he's got those talented pass catchers, A.J. Brown, Jonu Smith, and Corey Davis. Like, it, it feels very weird to say this, but the Titans have a pretty decent offense right now, and Tannehill is playing pretty well, and he's another guy, you know, very similar to Kyle Allen that I can definitely see, you know, being a starting quarterback for, you know, fantasy football playoff winning teams. Stranger things have happened in the fantasy football playoffs. Let's look back to Blake Bortles a couple of years ago. He helped people win fantasy football championships. We're not saying Ryan Tannehill is one of the best quarterbacks in the league, but when it comes to fantasy, he's getting it done right now. Let's move on over to the running back position here, Davis. And we were talking before we started recording, and you're excited about J.D. McKissick. Played 70% of the snaps yesterday. Didn't really have that much production, but I know that Ty Johnson is hurt as well. So what do you like about J.D. McKissick? Yeah, Ty Johnson suffered a concussion in Sunday's game for Detroit. And really, since Carrion Johnson has been injured, this backfield has been a total mismatch. We've seen Paul Perkins play. We've seen Trey Carson get a start and then head to the IR. Now Ty Johnson is injured. I would think that McKissick is going to be in line for another game where he gets about 55 to 70 percent of the snaps. And if Detroit does not sign anybody, you know, they, they don't sign any vets. They don't sign Jay Ajay or Doug Martin or anything like that. I definitely think that McKissick can be pretty valuable valuable for fantasy teams down the stretch because he's a really good pass catcher that was something that he was able to do well in Seattle and allowed him to stay on that team for a you know a long time and then he headed to Detroit and he's, he served that role pretty well here as well and and in PPR leagues we want the running back who is going to be getting the third down snaps anyways which McKissick should theoretically do so he's actually probably my favorite waiver wire out of the week other than the next running back that we are about to talk about. Davis is right about J.D. McKissick seeing the pass-catching role with the Detroit Lions. They haven't been able to run the ball effectively, but they've been really using that short passing game as an extension of the run game. At least three receptions in three straight. Just had seven targets this past week in Week 10. Make sure you look for J.D. McKissick on your waiver wires. That other running back that Davis was talking about is Brian Hill. Devontae Freeman dealing with a foot injury. And Davis, I believe that you had the opportunity to speak with Brian Hill. What can you tell us about him? Yeah, Brian Hill came on uh, my podcast that you guys can, of course, can find on iTunes or anywhere that you uh, want to listen to podcasts. Just search my name and you will find it. But uh, I, I came away pretty impressed from talking to him, and I came away pretty impressed from watching him play on Sunday against the New Orleans Saints. He was targeted a few times in the passing game, got 20 rushing attempts against the tough New Orleans Saints run defense, and I thought that he played pretty well. And uh, Ito Smith is now on the injured reserve, so he's not going to be back this season. And if Devonta 
Freeman misses time, which I think he probably would, because what is the reason, what is the incentive for Devonta Freeman to come back and play through an injury in a lost season for a losing Atlanta Falcons team? You know, there just is not that much incentive. And we've seen Atlanta in losing seasons before start to rest their veterans. They did it last year with Julio Jones down the stretch, and I would expect they will do that with Freeman down the stretch this uh, this season as well. So Hill, to me, seems like a guy who might get, you know, 15 touches a game the rest of the way. Devontae Freeman banged up in week 10. Brian Hill saw 51% of the snaps, 20 carries, and two targets against the New Orleans Saints. They've got a really good matchup coming up against the Carolina Panthers in week 11. If you need a running back, Brian Hill is one of the best waiver wire ads this week. Let's move over to the wide receiver position here, Davis. And Josh Reynolds at least caught a pass for the Los Angeles Rams, something we can't say about Cooper Cup in Week 10. He played 95% of the snaps. He had five targets. Why do you like Josh Reynolds moving forward? Oh, man. I have a long and storied history with Josh Reynolds. He's been, you know, a guy that I've argued with Daily Roto founders, uh, Drew Dinkmeyer and Michael Leone about, a lot of my other friends in DFS, because I, I think Josh Reynolds is pretty good. I think he has a, a really interesting skill set that Robert Woods, Brandon Cooks, and Cooper Cup do not have. So when Reynolds subs in for one of those three guys, he's able to run routes and do some different combinations that those other three guys cannot. And we've seen it already happen this year. I mean, Josh Reynolds has more receiving touchdowns than Robert Woods does and and he's been a part-time player this year and with those five targets and with Cooper Cup now getting you know number one wide receiver treatment I think that Reynolds is going to serve a, a really important role for this offense with Brandon Cooks out and the most recent reports on Brandon Cooks health have not been good uh, and, and I think for Brandon Cooks sake it's important that he thinks about that you know he, he's now had two concussions this year and four documented concussions so if he wants to sit out the rest of the season or if he is not cleared by the independent neurologist yeah, he shouldn't play. And Josh Reynolds is more than capable of being this team's third wide receiver. And as we've seen in the past, the third wide receiver on the Rams with how pass heavy they are is really valuable. Davis is right. That third pass catcher in this offense can be valuable. And we've seen now with Cooper Cup struggling outside of that 220 yard game. That was a really good game. He has 50 yards or less in three of his last four games. So look for Josh Reynolds on your waiver wires. Much like Ryan Tannehill, Darius Slayton is heading into a bye here, but you can't ignore the performance that he just put together in Week 10. 14 targets, 120 yards, and two touchdowns against the New York Jets. Davis, what are the chances that Darius Slayton can keep this production going forward after the bye? Yeah, Slayton and Josh Reynolds are actually both uh, very similar in terms of their playing time is totally reliant on uh, another wide receiver's concussion problems. Sterling Shepard can continue to have concussion problems. Brandon Cooks continues to have concussion problems. And to me, it seems like Shepard's just probably not going to come back. The Giants season is mega lost. You know, they just have no chance of doing anything competitive this year at all. So the team should play Darius Slayton and they should decide, OK, is this going to be a guy that we want to keep moving forward? because you know they have outs on Sterling Shepard's contract they have outs on Golden Tate's contract and it, theoretically it would make sense for them to have a bigger bodied outside wide receiver as their third guy if Golden Tate and Sterling Shepard were their other wide receivers because Tate and Shepard are more like slot guys so for me I think that Slayton even if Sterling Shepard comes back is probably locked into about five to eight targets a week as his kind of median projection and that's not even taking into account the fact that Saquon Barkley I think is probably going to get shut down here pretty soon he's left uh, his last three games at some point with some kind of injury concern whether it be uh, a concussion check or an ankle check uh, in this last game he got his shoulder checked out and if and when Barkley starts to miss time, this team is going to get even more pass heavy, which would lead to more opportunities for guys like Slayton, uh, Evan Ingram and those and those sorts of players. So for me, Slayton is a pretty hot waiver wire pickup, not so much because of the incredible performance, but I think he has a clear path to playing time now. You heard Davis. The Giants season is, quote, mega lost thanks to my New York Jets. But with Saquon Barkley, Sterling Shepard, and Evan Ingram banged up, they need someone to catch passes. So even with Darius Slayton heading into the bye, you should look to pick him up because, again, the opportunity is going to be there. Davis, the tight end position is always a fun one to try and figure out for fantasy football, but Jack Doyle has actually been pretty consistent over the past three weeks, at least 60 yards or a touchdown in each one of those games. What do you like about Jack Doyle, and does it worry you that Eric Ebron played more yesterday. Does that worry you at all? 
it does worry me a little bit because really Eric Ebron had not been playing. Eric Ebron had been a total bit player uh, throughout most of the season, you know, playing about 30 to 40% of the team snaps really only being used in specific packages. However, I do think it's actually better for the Colts to be playing both of them because their third wide receiver with T.Y. Hilton out is... I mean, could you name them? Like, if I if I gave you $100 right now, I don't know if you could name the third wide receiver for the Indianapolis Colts. They have Chester Rogers, and they have Zach Pascal, and then they have a bunch of different guys who are rotating as the third guy. So it just makes more sense for them to play 12 personnel. You know, throw Marlon Mack out there, have Ebron and Doyle out there, and then have Pascal and Chester Rogers out there. And as a base set, Doyle is going to get a lot of those easy targets, and that's what we saw. Now, he only got... Four targets in his last two games. He had eight targets against the Oakland Raiders earlier this year when T.Y. Hilton missed. But for me, Doyle gets such easy targets that you just know he's going to get you eight PPR points every single week. And he's got upside for more than that due to his current role in the red zone. Well, now you've got me thinking, Davis. Now you've got me thinking, Davis. I'm, I'm trying to figure out if I can win that $100 from you. Uh, who is the third wide receiver for the Colts? I guess it's Deion Kane. Pyrus Campbell's been banged up as well. But See, that proves thing. your De- point. Deion Kane is on the he, Deion <laughs> Kane is on the injured reserve. So literally, that I, I couldn't name it. It's my job to know, and I don't know. You just proved your point again. You're making me look bad out here, Davis. But ultimately, you're right because they need people to catch the ball with T.Y. Hilton banged up and Zach Pascal getting more defensive attention. They should be using these two tight end sets. So even with Eric Ebron playing more, I think it makes a lot of sense that Jack Doyle is still a really, really good pickup if you're in need of a tight end. Last but not least at the tight end position, we have Mike Gusecki and Davis. I was on Gusecki last week. I was talking to Greg Sussman about him, and yesterday's performance was not a great one. He fumbled as well. The six targets I think you like to see the first game without Preston Williams here. Preston Williams now on IR, but it seems like it's really just Devontae Parker and Mike Gusecki now in the passing attack. Man, uh, so I, I pulled up the, uh, the the box score on sportsgrid.com to look at the passing targets for the Dolphins when I went to go, you know, kind of think about the waiver wire. And they had like targeted like 11 different guys in that game. You know, they were throwing Miles Gaskin out there and Patrick Laird and Alan Hearns and Albert Wilson and Durham Smythe. Like they were just throwing all the bodies they could out there. But it was Gasicki who has the ceiling for me. It, it's Gasicki who could have the uh, actual ability to turn into a meaningful fan fantasy player on this team. And, and you're right. I do think it's Devonte Parker. It's Mike Gesicki and it's everyone else. And yeah, the fumble wasn't great, but six targets. I mean, you know, there are a lot of tight ends that are not even going to see six targets in a game because that's the nature of the position right now. And I think that's kind of Gesicki's baseline. So if he is out there for you, I actually think he's like a, a guy I would really feel comfortable starting most weeks. The production wasn't great for Mike Gesicki in week 10, but as Davis mentioned, He's getting targets right now. Six targets yesterday. Most tight ends are not going to see that many targets. And his athletic profile is actually off the charts. So if he continues to see this opportunity, he should be able to make the most of it. Let's give the people a defense to stream in week 11 here. Davis and the Raiders. The Oakland Raiders defense. We don't normally talk about this defense, but they are going up against Ryan Finley and the Cincinnati Bengals. And Ryan Finley, not very good. Yeah, Ryan Finley, not very good at all. Guy has a total pop gun arm. He has the lowest recorded throw velocity of any quarterback at the combine since they started recording that particular metric. So uh, to me, that would suggest uh, he's he's not super good, not good at uh, slinging it out there. And in fact, he is so bad that uh, they the the Bengals were trailing by 30 points against the Ravens, and they just shut it down. They they just started running Joe Mixon. Joe Mixon got 30 rushing attempts in a game that his team lost by 30 points. So to me, that shows me the Bengals they're giving up they don't care it's just time to shut it down and to try and minimize as much damage as possible trying to not get guys injured so I think that uh, the Raiders despite having a not great defense and suffering through a bunch of injuries themselves I still think that they're going to be a top streaming defense against Ryan Finley the Bengals not very good their offensive line not very good the Oakland Raiders defense Also not very good, but they should be able to make plays against Ryan Finley and the Cincinnati Bengals. So if you do need a defense heading into week 11, we like the Oakland Raiders. For Davis Maddock, I am Frank Stanfield. Thank you so much for watching and good luck on your waiver wires this week.